This is Chris Thompson. The due process case that I chose is Abigail Alliance for Better Access to Developmental Drugs versus Von Eichenbach in 2006. Abigail Burroughs was a young lady who was diagnosed with head and neck cancer when she was in her late teens. Um, in the year 2001, um, Abigail's treatment options had been exhausted and um, unfortunately there wasn't any progress with her disease. Her oncologist was aware of a um, experimental treatment that may help Abigail uh, because of the genetic markers, um, the biological markers that um, were involved in Abigail's cancer. Um, Abigail was denied access to the experimental treatment because um, she didn't meet the criteria. And unfortunately, in June of 2001, um, Abigail passed away at the age of 21. Um, during the time um, that Abigail was trying to fight for access to the clinical uh, trial, the experimental therapy, um, her father um, started a nonprofit organization um, Abigail Alliance um, for better access to um, developmental drugs. Um, in 2006, the organization Abigail Alliance um, filed a um, due process uh, lawsuit against the Food and Drug Administration um, citing the Fifth Amendment uh, that the FDA was blocking um, Abigail's right and, and other patients' rights to um, life and liberty. Um, the three-judge uh, three panel found in favor of the alliance, citing that um, patients do have the right to due process, patients do have the right to try and save their own lives, um, self-preservation, um, and uh, that historically Americans, you know, do not um, stand in the way of a person trying to um, save themselves. Um, in 2007, the FDA appealed the decision of the three-panel judge, and um, the appeal um, it was the decision was overturned in favor of the FDA, um, citing that the uh, that the FDA um, is the are, are the only ones that can determine whether or not an experimental treatment is safe and effective for uh, patients to use. That's why they have the clinical trials. Um, and the court ruled that if the FDA is, has not approved a drug for access, then um, it doesn't exist um, as being available until it's released. Um, even during this time, um, the 2006 and 2007, the FDA had already started expanding access. Um, there had to be some pretty strict criteria. Um, all treatment options have to be exhausted um, depending on the clinical trial drug. Um, you know, small groups of people might be able to utilize it in phase two. Um, and under certain circumstances, um, some other larger groups may be able to access the, the experimental medications under um, the phase three, which is the final phase. The um, the problem with these phases and the expanded access that exists with the FDA is it's a very um, time sensitive process. Um, it takes a long time to get anything approved, and and unfortunately, people with terminal illness don't always have that kind of time. And when when they get to a point where all of their other options are exhausted, um, time is of the essence. Um, I think um, it would be um, 
better if the FDA would be able to speed up their process. Um, I understand it from both sides. I understand that the FDA needs to make sure that um, treatment options are safe and effective for people. But at the same time, I also understand that uh, people um, with no other options are desperate. And they should also have the option to um, try a medication or a treatment therapy um, without liability to the FDA or the testing um, facility if, if things were to go bad. But um, hopefully this is something that could be sped up in the future and as our our drugs, um, our drug companies do more research. Hopefully there will be more effective drugs um, on the horizon.